Hi everyone, how are you? I am super excited to be live with you guys today. Today we're gonna be talking about flange sizes. I know like that is not a very like common topic when we first start talking about breastfeeding and when you're a new mom and you buy your pump and you don't even understand. Your pump comes with certain flanges that you don't know if they're the right size, but flange size is so important. It can be key for you to actually be effective at pumping breast milk. It can be key for you not having pain. So it's a very cool topic today. We're gonna be talking to Danielle from Latched at First Sight. So we're just waiting for her to join. Um, while she joins, I would love to know from you guys here if you have any questions about sizing, if you've ever questioned if you're using the right flange size, um, I would love to hear a little bit from you guys and Danielle will be joining us right now. Um, it's low, but it's okay. Okay, uh, we'll get her to join. Perfect. Good, how are you? Hey, Danielle, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for letting today. me join. I'm so excited to talk about this topic too. It's such an important topic, right? Like I remember when I got, first got my pump, like I got it through the insurance, like I followed that whole process and then I had no idea. I remember like opening like my box and like looking at all the pieces and following the instructions, but something that never clicked for me or that I was completely unaware mm -hmm. was the franchising, right? My pump came with a certain size, I assumed that that was going to work for me. And one of the things that when my lactation consultant came and I was like, hey, what's going on? This is very painful. Like, I don't like this pumping at all, but I needed to pump because of work. And she's like, Lorena, like, these are way too big for you. Like, A, this is why you're not getting enough milk through your pumping session. And second, like, like this is just not working. And I then I ordered the correct size and it was a game changer. So that's why we wanted to like, and I know I'm not the only one. I know you probably talked to a lot of moms that are going through the same situation. So um, let's get let's get started, Daniel. Like I, I'm seeing here Rachel saying like, okay, how can I find the correct size? So I say like, we start a little bit um, from there. Like, how do you know if the flange size that you're using is yes. the correct size? Like what are, what are some signs that what you're using is not working for you? And then after, how can you find the correct Flange yep, size absolutely. for you. Absolutely. Um, and to make you feel better, my oldest is six and I was just used alternating. So I'm sure there's parents out there being like, oh, I'm just going to use whatever <laughs> and it's fine. I definitely was not even close to the size that I was using. But you don't know what you don't know, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, so um, first, the one important thing I always say with breast pumps and breastfeeding, whatever you're doing, it should never be painful or uncomfortable. So like, that's a number one, like a big red flag. If you're having pain or discomfort with pumping, it's probably your flange size is not mm -hmm. a correct size. Um, the other, um, you know, there's a variety of ways that you can tell like, oh, is it, does it hurt? Does it not? Um, or is it too big or too small? Another thing is if you um, are seeing, like say, I'm going to use some demos because it's easier to use, right? Um, yes, please. So please, this obviously please. is not the right size, but I just want to show you and we'll talk about sizing. But um, if you're holding it and you feel like when you're pumping, it's losing suction and you really have to hold the flange in, it's probably too mm -hmm. big. Um, and another thing, if you're noticing a lot, like when it's I don't, I can't exactly show with these models how it works, but like, say when you're pumping, it's yes. your breast tissue is going like in and out and it's getting all like, not just your nipple, but a lot of breast tissue is getting pulled into this. And this is like the tunnel mm -hmm. of the flange. This is the diameter of what we're going to be talking about. Um, it's not what, what size the, you know, the cone part is. Um, so that's just something to be, you know, if you notice a lot of tissues getting pulled in, it's probably going to be too big. Um, yes. whereas if it's small, it's too small, you could probably have some pain just because it's going to be rubbing. So your nipple may essentially be rubbing, mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to show a better, like it may be like rubbing on the side like this. Um, yes, and totally. Painful. And you know, you may be like, why is this hurting? Or, you know, at that time too, you may, if it's too small like that, you may, um, you may be restricting the milk flow. So you could be prone to more like clogged milk ducts or, um, you know, discomfort or not emptying your breast fully. Um, and that goes the same as like a phalange that's too large. You may notice you pump for 20 minutes and 
your breasts are still like nothing. You've got no milk flow, but your breasts are super full. They're full. Exactly. Yes. So those are like some indicators of like too small and too big. Um, and those are like the big point, like key points to like be mindful of. Um, and it's hard to be aware of it because you're exhausted. You just had a baby. Uh, you know, you haven't slept. All these things. And you just, it's like one more thing you have to think of. So it's a lot. So this is good. We're going over this and making everyone aware of it. So, um, yeah. so those are the, yeah. Perfect. And then, then you know, like, so basically that like, we have to be aware. So if there's too much breast tissue going in, mm -hmm. it's going to be too big for you. If it's rubbing too much against your nipple and yes. there's not enough space, it's going to, and it's exactly. painful, it's going to be too small for you. And both of those would turn in like you not getting the amount of milk that you want in the desired period of time. Right. So you're not necessarily being effective with your pumping session and kind of like getting what yep. you want out of it, which is a very frustrating process to be sitting there for 30 minutes and not get anything or having to be in pain. So pumping should not be painful. You should be seeing mm -hmm. like a flow like that you want. So that's super important. And then like now that like, let's say that you know that, hey, like somebody listening here either live right now, if you have questions, please let us know. But somebody that's going to watch the recording or read our email and it says like, you know what? Yeah, I'm seeing like too much like of my breast tissue going in or like too little and it's hurting. Yeah. This is not the right size. So I've determined that I need a different size. How do you know what size you are? Like, do you need a lactation consultant or a professional or is there something that you can do on your own to try to guess what size you are? And yes, order and that's great. Yeah, size there, you definitely can. There's different ways to measure, which I'm going to go over. Mm -hmm. There's like a few different ways. Um, and you can actually do it on your own. Obviously, if you're like not sure and needing help, then I would, you know, reach out to a lactation consultant. But it's also um, a lot of like, you know, one size doesn't fit all, you know, and both breasts can be different. Si nipples like mm -hmm. can be different sizes and breasts. Let's face it. We're not symmetric. Um, yeah. It's, which is not it's normal, but doesn't exactly. feel normal. But yeah, so there are ways you can check and see like what size you are. And um as far as sizing, I typically don't recommend sizing before having the baby. Um, you can do it just to like gauge, but like your breasts are going to go through so many changes in those first few days. Um, and after like postpartum, you may change sizes. So it's always good to know how to sort of size your, um, your phalange and have a like good sense. So the one I'm going to start with the one, um, this is the, uh, like the nipple ruler diameter. Um, that's like the yes. one that's like... Uh, you, so Where do you, you get one of those? On Amazon. Sorry. Uh, it's like a free pack. Um, it's, awesome. Obviously, there's different sizes. Uh, it's all the same. I mean, they make, there's ones made for just breast. Mm -hmm. You know, you can buy one that says, oh, breast nipple flange size. Or you can get one of these. I use these at my consults. They're the same exact thing. Though This is plastic. I mean, they make the silicone com if it's comfortable to measure. But mm -hmm. I'm going to show you with what I use at my consults because it's, it works wonderful. Um, so obviously there's a variety of sizes and I'm going to try not to hold it up my face and sort of scoot over. Yes. Um, so this is the one method that you can measure your nipple. And when we're doing phalange sizing, it's not what size your breast is. Mm -hmm. It's the size of your nipple itself. We're not going to measure the areola. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're, it's, we're going to measure the nipple only. Um, so that, yes. Oh, that's a no. really good point. So know the areola. Yeah. Okay. And I that's okay that you would, okay. would, you would think, oh, and everything, but we're going to measure just the nipple and that's the diameter of what we're going to measure because that is what we're going to want the size to be of the circle here, the phalange, which obviously when you put the breath, it's like this, yes. but I'm just showing for reasons, the diameter here. Um, and as you can see, like this is a 24. Okay. And I'm going to put it it's a 20, like this is a 24 measure. So they're accurate. I'm just showing, like showing how that is. Um, okay. So to measure with this ruler that you can, also you can make, they make printable ones. There's a lot of um, pump companies out there. And I think sometimes breast pumps come with a phalange ruler now, which is really cool. Um, so you're, that, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm like, I wish I amazing. had this. I, now there is, it's out there. Um, so your breast pump is typically going to come with a 24 millimeter, which is right here and a 28, which is right here. So those are the sizes that are 27, depending brands. Um, those are the mm -hmm. sizes that are going to be coming. Okay. What we're going to want to do when we're measuring. So I'm going to use the 28 for that's the largest flange you're probably going to get mm -hmm. in your, uh, your kit. 
So when you're measuring, as you can see, okay, this is a lot of areola, and the, and I'll show you with a different. It's too um, big. Yes, too, just to show you, you know, you see the difference. Like we we're just wanting to measure this nipple right here, not all the areola. So then that's something that you make. That's going to be way too big, obviously. So you can go down to the 24. Again, it's still big. And I'm going to move this uh, breast demo around so you guys can see. Is that okay? Is it? Yes. You guys can see okay? Perfect. Yes. That's perfect. Um, we can so see perfectly. Then we go to the 20, where you can see it's still moving a little bit. And I'm bringing this really close so you guys can get a good visual of like mm -hmm. how to. So this one's still too big. So we're going to keep going. You see how. Sorry, I'm trying to. This is. It's a no, little still perfect. big, if you can see on the corner. So we're going to go to the 15, and that's a perfect fit. You just want to measure the diameter of your nipple is basically what I'm showing you right now. Um, so um, um, I know that's crazy because you're like, oh. I got a 28, and I'm actually a 15. It's And it's wild. Um, and again, those... What's the most um, common size so, that you see I, within your practice? It's, I mean, it, it everyone's, you know, practice? it varies, but I mean, of common size just mm -hmm. in my like lactation uh research is usually between like a 16 17 to a 20 millimeter so we're talking about like this area yes. like this range right here and they're sending us all the way up to here which is okay there are there are nipples that are different sizes and that's totally fine but it's just yeah the common size is more like 20 to 17 or 16 um which is wild so this is Perfect. like this is probably one of the easier ways to measure, um, but you don't need to have this. I mean, you can print, there's a printable you can do and just cut the circles out and it's the same exact way. Um, so that's one way. And then, so you're gonna measure and say you get a 15. Um, typically you're going, yeah. what I didn't say before, you're gonna measure pre-pumping, pre-stimulation. So you want the nipple to, yes. Uh, so it's not so bigger than you want the nipple to, to okay. be, you know, averted a little bit, a little erect to measure, um, you know, so sometimes you may need to just, you know, move it out a little bit to get that mm -hmm. nipple out a little bit, um, which is totally fine. You can still breastfeed with any kind of nipple. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be pre-pump. And then you're actually going to add one to three millimeters onto that. So I'm saying a 15, then that's probably going to be, you know, if you might, may want to get like a 17. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the one thing, it okay. does vary. It's sort of, you know, you're going to measure a size and be like, oh, I'm a, I think I'm a 17. And then say you get it and you're like, it's rubbing or it looks too big. You're going to have to size yes. it. It is sometimes like a trial and error, which is sort of frustrating um, unless you are. Yeah. But once you find exactly. it, you're like golden. Yes. So it's totally. a little bit, like, it, it gives, gives you a base. base. So that's, this is the, the um, diameter ruler method that you can do. Um, so that's one of the ideas. Yeah. Yes. And Danielle, before we yes. go into the next method, I wanted to address yes. uh, Danica's question here that says, I properly measured and was also measured by a lactation consultant. She says, um, I was told that I was a 24, but it was painful. So I tried a 27 and it was still painful and only a 28 or 30 wasn't painful. Is this normal? Yeah. Have you heard of this before? So basically she was measured way smaller as a 24 and the only thing that feels comfortable mm -hmm. for her is a 28 it definitely, or 30. It is, that can totally happen. And it could be, um, I'm not sure with this particular um, person, but I don't know if they were sized mm -hmm. before stimulation or after. Um, so that may be, and it may Good be a comment that we can touch base, but um, that's why I, sometimes I say to add, you know, the one to three millimeters. Um, and see the other thing you can do if you're and this is not really flat this is more like a little hack if you're like it sort of feels uncomfortable but i was sized for this and let's see before i you know i can try different sizes you can actually put a little um nipple cream yeah. on the inside like some lanolin or nipple butter on mm -hmm. the inside of the flange just to help with friction to see like to get a better sense is it is it the right fit but something's just not good. like it that's a good w way to try and see if it's um, and that's just a nice little okay. thing to do just to give like a protective barrier on your nipples too, because there's a lot of stimulation going on. So, yeah. Lots, yeah. lots of 
things going on. Perfect. So then we've talked about for you guys that just joined about yes. the flange, like there's a ruler, yeah. you can get it on Amazon. Danielle was talking yep. about it a second ago. So we talked about that method. If you're not sure about what size you are, you measure just your nipple and then you'll add three. So in this example that we were yeah. doing, um, the fake move measured at 15 and we added three. So she would be like an 18 or 17. And that can give you like a good start of what size you should be trying. But are there any other methods, Daniel? I know you're talking about printouts yes. or anything else that if we don't yes. have a ruler, can't find it, um, don't want to go totally. on Amazon. So, um, so what else can we do? There's another ruler method I'll show you. But say you're like, I don't have a ruler. I can't find one. You can actually use coins mm -hmm. like uh, US coins to see obviously like wa wash your if you're putting it to your make sure you do good wash yes exactly be sanitary so, I want to show you a guideline. so um right now i have a u.s coin this is a dime um this is going to be the size of an 18 millimeter so um i'll just show hold it up to mm -hmm. here it is 18 as you can see 18 so you can go okay. in your part your you know your piggy bank whatever you get your toddler's piggy bank and see like okay let me see to get a sort of a better idea. So this is an 18 millimeter. Um, and then a penny is the next one that we're gonna, so we're gonna just go in sizes of like from big, smallest to biggest. The penny is a 20 millimeter mm -hmm. uh, phalange. So that's a good in like, you know, visual way to see. Um, then we have the yeah. nickel, which is a 22 millimeter phalange size. Um, and then mm -hmm. we have the quarter, which is a 24 millimeter flange. So those are little things to, um, you know, be mindful of and to like, you can use, you, you have change laying around somewhere that you could try. Um, yeah. In this case, Daniel, if yes. you're using coins, like two, two questions, are you still, you're measuring the nipple and then are yes. you adding three? Like, like, let's say that you measure like. You said the quarter was like a 24. Like, do you still add yes, three or like, same. how does that so work with the, the coin same method? diameter size as the actual, so it's, it's all the same. So this is just the diet. So this is like essentially okay. the ruler. You're just holding up and being like, oh, mm -hmm. I got a 24. Is this, do you think that's the right size? No, it's too big. You know, like things like that. And you can sort of, um, and like, I typically, you know, I feel like one to three millimeters is a good gauge. There are, there's different research out there, like two to four, you know, there's so many different numbers with everything. So I say one to three to be like cautious. And some, I feel like I tend to see like one or two millimeter sizes that are, you know, the best okay. fit um, in my practice that I've seen. So I would be wary of like adding like three or four millimeters because I think that might give a too big of a phalange of what size you are getting. Um, okay. But, you know, there also is like sweat, like you're not that you get swollen, but you know, there's stimulation. So your, your nipples are, are tissue. They're going to expand with you know, stimulation. So that's just something to be mm -hmm. mindful of. And if you notice like, oh, my breasts actually swell or not my breasts, sorry, my nipples swell bigger then that could be just mm -hmm. may want to size. Maybe you do want to do the three millimeter if you feel like they're getting much bigger after pumping or breastfeeding. Yeah. Quick question, Daniel. Like, is there a possibility that you size correctly in the beginning of your breastfeeding journey? And then as your breastfeeding journey continues, like let's say maybe in month three or four, is it possible or does it happen frequently that you need another flange size or you normally stick to the same flange size? Yeah, that's a great question. Breastfeeding it actually journey? can change, which is maddening. So I would totally save, okay. like say you got you are 22 now and that works. I would hold on to your 24s and 28s or 27s that you have just during your journey. So, yeah. Yeah. And then another question that I think it's so important. I saw it coming through our stories yesterday. It's like those flying sizing, like just apply, oh, like I think like she was concerned, mm -hmm. um, Monica, her name is from like with like yep. the, the wearable pumps. It's like, is it the same like for the flanches mm -hmm. on the wearable pumps? Like for example, like the LV or, or the Spectra that's like, like traditional flanches like that you use, like would you use the same sizing method for wearable pumps than for the yes, traditional yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I typically say yes, it is the same because, you know, it's the same diameter. It's okay. not going to change. Like if you measure yourself and you're an 18, it's going to be an 18 for the wearable. Yeah. Perfect. And then what oh, about yes. material? Because yes. I thought that was a question right? as well, too, that, in terms oops, of like, okay, hey, like yes. plastic, silicone, like 
yes. any preference? How do we pick on those? Like, do you all work with all of the pumps? Like, that's another question that I saw is like, if I have a spectrum mm -hmm. pump, can I use flanges from another yep. brand? Like, let's talk about materials and also like if you're stuck with whatever your pump brand is, mm -hmm. those are the only so, flanges that you can use. You, there are so many flanges out there that, um, so it is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, as a parent, we know it's overwhelming all the things. Um, so mm -hmm. I will say different brands of like pump brands, they make specific sizes, but there are so many other brands that make ones that are compatible with the Modelo, with the Spectra, with the LV, all the like so many different exactly. things. So I always say one rule of thumb, say you're like, oh, I'm a, I'm a 19 millimeter, but spec, I'm just making up a brand. Spectra doesn't make a, a 19 mm -hmm. millimeter go on Amazon, Google, whatever, and see like 19 millimeter breast flange compatible with Spectra S1 and see like, and make sure it's just compatible. Um, so that's just something to be mindful okay. of. And then, um, you know, there's silicone and plastic. I just have two different examples right mm -hmm. here. Um, I will say it's all about, it, it definitely is up to like per, per, personal preference. Like what feels best? It's like, you know, like when you sleep on a pillow, do you like it firm or soft kind of thing? It's a little bit, you know, similar in a yes. way. Um, I will say silicone flanges are sometimes more recommended, say, when you're pumping with the right size flange and nothing's hurting, but you notice, I, I wish I had a full pump, but you notice your nipples going all the way to the base of, like, the kit. Um, that yes. you may have more, like, elastic nipples, which is the worst term in the world, but I don't know what else to say. That's the, <laughs> that's the term they picked. Um but yeah, so you want to make sure, like, so if you notice, like, your nipples are getting pulled all the way in, you may benefit from a silicone one, just because it's a little more gentle, okay. and the way it's made may feel a little bit better and help with that uh, elasticity. Um, so that's just something to be mindful of. That, so that's one of the reasons you may, that may help you decide plastic versus silicone. Exactly. Go to silicone. Um, the other okay. thing, you know, I've... I mean, you do so much research. I've heard that these are a little more gentle, like the silicone ones. But again, I've had yeah. clients, and I personally yes. have never used silicone because I don't even know if they existed three years ago. They probably did, but I had no idea. Um, so, but I will say, um, I've had clients that have bought silicone ones and they're like, yes, I can't wait. And they're like, I do not like these. I like the plastic flange. And that's okay. It's like sort of preference. Um, and also they make, they also do make, uh, silicone inserts that fit in to it. I'm like trying, I don't know if this is compatible. I just grabbed my things, but basically, essentially it would fit into here yeah. and give you that silicone, that size diameter. So say you have, the, I think actually, this, say this is a 28 and this is, I don't even know what size this is. 20, uh, I mean, 17, we'll say. Um, you can put it in and it will be the diameter of the 17. You see the difference here. Um, again, clients are like, which one? Yep. So that would be kind of like a workaround to getting like different size flanches. You can get exactly. like some different sizes of silicone mm -hmm. inserts and kind of yep. like try which one feels better instead of investing on exactly. a bunch of like different And, like, and that's what flanges, like, um, like when we do primarily like pumping and uh, flange fitting, we'll have like inserts that we'll sort of play around with and everything and see. Um, but yeah, so that is the silk. Like, so typically, I, I mean, it's, it's not a direct answer like, which one to get the insert, the plastic or the, but the silicone, it really is preference. Um, and sort of, you know, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's all that matters. Whatever makes yeah. your journey feel gr as great as it can be, you know, and helpful, then I say, do it, you know? Yeah. Yes. I totally agree. And then let me ask you a question, Danielle, like Nelly here is saying like, after I pump my nipple doubles in size, is my flange too big or is that uh, or yep. is that when I should measure and I know we spoke about Nelly like you should not measure at yep. that point you correct. measure before correct. you but, actually you know, pump, if you're correct? noticing that it is doubling and like getting much bigger like doubling in size it may be worth mm -hmm. measuring what it's doubling in size and seeing is it a huge difference or not and if they have that flange on hand I always say you know try that and see what what's have the it. difference or is it the same or is the milk is your milk production less or more you know um so that's just something to you okay. know, think about so yeah ah. 
That's perfect. And then let me see I if you have I, any other questions because there's so what, much so in terms of my like, daughter will be uh, here soon, but if I have to grab her, I'll just like come with her back if you know. Okay. I feel bad. Thank you. No, no problem. Yeah. I think the last question that I see that we didn't answer because we've taken so much of your time is like how often because there's so much like sometimes yes. you change like the like bulbs on the pump or depending on what pump you have, but your flanches, should you be changing them, the flange yeah. itself? Mm -hmm. That's and a great so, question. I will often? say with that, I always say refer to the manual because every place is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But if you notice a visible crack or something's off, definitely replace it. But again, I would, I always tell clients like even like pump parts, I'm like, refer to your manual because each pump, each phalange has a different like timeline, which is really confusing on the lactation uh, consultant part. Cause I wish there was only one set, you know, number so i could keep track but you can't there's so it's all yes. different so yeah so read the manual because that's yeah. one of the things that i didn't do i was so eager to use it that i was like mm, instructions how to use it and i didn't read anything else so that's amazing and then you have a quick question so if anybody wanted to get in touch with you because yes. they still have another question or anything like that how can they reach out to you? Is that DM the best way to get in touch with you? Is it better through our comments, through yeah. your website? Like, yeah. What's the best way to get in touch with you? If yes, another absolutely. Question, or they I would say um, going through my website, which is www.latchatfirstsite.com is the best way just because, uh, you know, DMs through Instagram sometimes get a little lost. So I always, you know, yes, just please. contact me there and I would be happy to answer more questions because I know we weren't able to stay on as long as I had hoped and everything. But um, thank you. No, this is, this is perfect. We answered Great. all of the questions. We told them exactly how they could get their size because there's nothing as being empowered. Sometimes like it's intimidating to say like, oh, I have to talk to a lactation consultant or I have to do this. But just knowing that, like we were talking in the beginning, yep. that you through Amazon could order like a flange size and then just understanding like you add three and that's your size. Like it's just empowering yes. to know that there's things that you can do on your own and you don't have to be stuck kind of like where you are. So great information, Danielle. Thank you so much. I learned so much. I know people that were live did as well. Yes. So will people that watch the recording. Awesome. But thank you so much for your time. Yes, thank and you I hope so you much. This was this awesome. Again. And I can't wait for another time. Have a great day. All right, bye. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Bye.